The ocean as we know it is a very big and mysterious place. Many have rightfully dubbed it a second world, and that is accurate because it's a place that is very different from the world that's above it. And not unlike the land we live in, the waters of the world have deep places and dark secrets. For the longest time, the biggest secret was that of the Mariana Trench, which was so deep that no one could actually reach it. Now five have, and while it's still very much a mysterious thing, we can at least say that we know some of what's down there. Here now are 20 mysterious things found in the Mariana Trench. Number 20. Megalodon what they captured in Mariana Trench shocked the whole world, kind of. Now, I'm actually going to begin with some speculation. Not speculation by me, because I've got better things to do than guess what's down in a watery pit that I'd never planned to visit, but by others. Because when it comes to the ancient world, there were few creatures that were more feared than that of the Megalodon. This was the biggest shark ever, or at least we think so, and had a ravenous appetite that would allow it to consume up to two tons of food per day. They were apex predators of the ancient oceans, and if it was not proven to have existed via fossils, you might not even want to admit that it might have existed in the first place. There were a lot of things that would lead to its extinction, not the least of which was a certain extinction level event, as well as not being able to maintain its food supply. But what does does that have to do with the trench? Well, it's simple. If there was a place that could house a megalodon for all these years and have nobody notice, that would be the Mariana Trench. There are seriously people who believe that the trench is housing a few of these creatures, even finding signs of proof that it may actually lurk within the depths. The problem with that is manyfold, not the least of which is that multiple people have been down in the trench in part or in full and haven't seen anything like it. Second, it's really cold down there, and the Megalodon wouldn't have been in cold waters like those before. Also, why would it stay down there if it could come up here? Well, exactly, but you know, they did make a movie out of the idea, so that's something. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. USS Johnston Given that the Mariana Trench is deeper than Mount Everest is tall, you would be very fair in thinking that a lot of things could get lost down in its depths, and you would be right. However, you don't know just how exactly right you are. For example, what if I told you there was a shipwreck that was down in the trench? That shipwreck would be the USS Johnston, a 115 meter long US Navy destroyer that sank during the battle off Samar in 1944 after a fierce rager with a large fleet of Japanese warships. It was a fierce battle, and only about half the crew survived, none of which were on the ship's wreckage, just so you know. Victor Vescovo, who led the expedition and piloted the sub, was would say that the wreck was so deep that there was very little oxygen, and while there's a little bit of contamination from marine life, the ship is remarkably well intact, except for the damages that it took in the battle. Just to give you an inkling of how deep is deep in this case, the Johnston was found over four miles below the surface. That's quite a long way to fall. What's more, not all of the ship would be found or recovered when it was actually discovered. Not unlike the Titanic, there were parts of the ship that went even deeper. This is definitely one of those cooler elements of history, because here is a remnant from a war that was found in one of the deepest parts of the world, and only recently has it been somewhat recovered. Number 18. Ping Pong Tree Sponge now there's a name for you to put something on. What does the thing do in the trench? Bounce balls of kelp back and forth between various versions of itself? <laughs> it's a good thing because there's honestly nothing funny about this sponge at all. It may have a funny exterior, but the plant is actually a flesh-eating thing. This thing is 20 inches tall and most of it is composed of a thin stalk. At its top is a peculiar array of ethereal globules at the end of stems that emanate from a central body, hence why it's called the ping-pong tree. 
The swellings are covered in spicules, the tiny structures that form the skeleton of a sponge. In this case, they're hook-shaped, and any little crustaceans that touch them become trapped, the bristly hairs on their body caught on the hooks like Velcro. It's then that they begin the process of flesh-eating, getting closer and closer so that it can start processing the body. Not an appetizing thought, I would say. You may be wondering why I decided to put this on my list, and the answer is quite simple. It's a reminder of what we know and don't know about the oceans. We know that it's a place that can be dangerous, but it's also one where you would think that terror is limited due to certain animal species. But no, the sponge is arguably more terrifying than most of the things in the ocean, so just be glad that you're not the one being digested by it. Number 17. Dumbo Octopus Next up, we have an animal that's named after a famous animated character, the Dumbo Octopus. Your first thought upon looking at this creature may be something like, well, this octopus doesn't even look like an octopus. And yeah, it does feel more like an exaggerated form of something that we're all familiar with in octopuses. And yet, the Dumbo Octopus is very much real, and it holds the distinction of being one of the deepest dwelling octopus in the world. A thing of note, the colossal squid and the giant squid can't even make it down this far, but this little octopus can, showing just how special the creature is. And thus the question turns to its name and how it actually got it. Well, not unlike the legendary Disney cartoon Elephant, if you haven't seen the animated movie you should fix that, it's because of the ears. They're flappy, just like Dumbo. However, with the octopus being in the water, it's hard to tell if the creature can actually fly. But could you imagine if it did? That would break some scientists' brains for sure. There are many interesting things about the Dumbo octopus. For example, its size varies greatly. On average, it's between 8 inches and a foot long, and yet one was found to be over 6 feet long. When you compare them to other octopuses, they're rather small, but that doesn't mean that they're harmless. It's not stupid, and it may seem cute, but it does have a mean streak. In fact, not only are they known to be fierce, they actually swallow their prey whole. So, as the saying goes, it's not about the size, it's how you use it, and the Dumbo octopus knows how to use its size very, very well. Number 16. Metallic Sound when you have something as big and deep as the Mariana Trench, you're not just going to study it visually, because that makes it only half the story. The ocean is full of sounds, both from creatures, from tectonic plates moving around, and more. So scientists have been working out ways to better listen to the ocean, and back in 2016, one of their sound experiments, if you will, revealed a metallic sound that they honestly felt was that of a whale. <laughs> Regardless of what species it is, the whale had range. The call included sounds that span frequencies that reach as low as 38 hertz and as high as 8,000 hertz. Now to give you some perspective, humans can hear sounds between 20 and 20,000 hertz. That range was definitely enough to make the scientists take notice, saying that it was very distinct with all the crazy parts, and that the low frequency moaning part was typical of a baleen whale, and it's that kind of twangy sound that makes it all really unique. They don't find many new baleen whale calls in the ocean. Now, believe it or not, it was an underwater robot that got the call, and it was only about three seconds long, but that's more than enough to study and guess all that was being said within it. There have been other sounds that have been caught within the trench, and each of them helps to paint a picture for what lies deep within the waters. Number 15. Sea Cucumbers now, wait a moment, you might be saying after seeing that one. Sea cucumbers live near the surface of the water. I've even seen one, you might say. Well, you probably have, and many of these sea cucumber species are known to wash up on the shore in certain places and in certain seasons. The catch with all of that is you're thinking of these cucumbers as being just one species, when in fact there are actually over 1,700 versions of the sea cucumber, and many of them actually line the ocean floor. That includes the Mariana Trench. 
Believe it or not, they play an important role in marine ecosystems, breaking down detritus and other matter, cleaning their ecosystems, and so, having a lot of these on the ocean floor is actually a blessing because it helps to clean things up down there, and they do need that at times. As for some more odd facts about these species, they breathe through their anus. Now that's not something that I honestly need to say or that you need to hear, but hey, it is a fact. Also, sea cucumbers have a very curious defense defense mechanism, they'll literally mutilate their bodies and send the parts at the predator so that they can't be taken. They'll heal up afterwards if you couldn't guess, but still that's a little bit extreme. Now those within the trench are indeed a threat to many different kinds of predators. Perhaps it's honestly for the best that they have this ability. Number 14. Zombie Worms Yes, it's true, even if you were to run to the very deepest depths of the ocean in order to stay safe, you're still going to find yourself in the midst of zombies. Well, kind of at least. Depending on how much you know about our world, you may honestly know that there are creatures out there that do have certain ties to zombies in regards to how they can turn things into zombies. There's a zombie fungus, for example, that causes ants to do its bidding. It's really super gross. But in the Mariana Trench, amongst other places, they have to deal with zombie worms. In a twist, these worms won't go after the brains of the underwater creatures there, they actually go after their bones. Yes, these worms will infect the bodies of things like fish or whales, and then slowly eat away at their bones via acid. Now, these worms do have an acid that will go through the bone, then release the proteins via bacteria, and somehow the worms ingest them so that they can be fed. Depending on the ones that you find, you could honestly have dozens if not hundreds of those worms scattered throughout the body of the infected, but if you can believe it, it gets even more creepy than that. Because while there are male and female zombie worms, only the females are the ones who do the digging around. The males actually live inside of the females. That in and of itself is completely and absolutely disturbing. Number 13. Pollution this is one that sadly shouldn't be that much of a surprise. During a dive into the Mariana Trench in 2019, the man at the helm, Victor Vescovo, went seven miles down into the ocean where the trench was, and he saw many, many things. All sorts of wildlife and plants, but he also found a plastic bag. Yes, it's true. Not only did he see a plastic bag, he saw sweets wrappers down there in the trench as well. And remember, he was down over 25,000 feet below sea level. That's a place that, in theory, trash shouldn't be able to get to, and yet there it was for everyone to see. This is a major problem, and honestly something that builds upon the problem that humanity has been dealing with for ages now, a massive amount of trash pollution. The oceans of our world have become a cesspool for trash, so much so that there's literally an island of trash that collects the remains of two different continents in North America and Asia. It's huge, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. But now we can expand the reach of this pollution to the very depths of the ocean. And while it's only been confirmed three times that we've had our trash reach that point, that's three too many people. If things don't turn around, our oceans are going to become even more inundated with trash and will reach the point of no return. Not to mention, animals die because of the trash that we put in the oceans. Why should they have to suffer for our laziness? Number 12. Viperfish the viperfish is without a doubt one of the scariest creatures you're ever going to see in or out of the Mariana Trench. These fish are known for their very special hunting habits that allow them to get prey in terrifying fashion. Viperfish are believed to attack prey after luring them in within range with light-producing organs called photophores, which are located along the ventral sides of their body and also with a discrete photophore at the end of a long spine in the dorsal fin, reminiscent of the elysium of the anglerfish. The viperfish flashes this natural light on and off at the same time, moving its dorsal spine around like a fishing rod and hanging completely still in the water. So the prey doesn't suspect that they're in great danger, and yet they absolutely are. Now if you're curious why shining this light would work against the prey, the depths that they're at is in or beyond the midnight zone. This means that the light of the sun doesn't reach down to so many fish 
like the viper fish, creating their own light to ensure that they can see or have a unique trick to get things to come to them. And if I'm being honest with you, it is a bit of a freaky looking fish. Just look at its mouth and its teeth and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This is the stuff of nightmares and that's likely what helps make it a good predator in the first place. If you still want more facts to make you afraid of the fish, oh, they can also apparently live to be 40 years old and that makes it an older fish with a lot of hunting experience. It's just a good thing that you're not the one on the menu. Well, yet anyways. Number 11. Telescope Octopus Next, we'll talk about the Telescope Octopus, a very weird octopus that is both more and less than meets the eye. But don't worry, I'll explain. If you look at its eyes, you're going to notice that they're incredibly tubular. They're the only octopus in the world to have such a feature. It is these eyes that are the reason they're called the telescope octopus. These eyes are more than just oddly shaped though. Cephalopods as a whole are known to have exceptional vision, but the telescope octopus has eyes that can move independently and are felt to have even greater eyesight than those of its brethren. They're said to be able to scan their environment with ease, making it able to ensure that it doesn't get caught by any foes. Another interesting factoid about them is the depths that they tend to be a part of. They live at depths between 500 and 6,500 feet in tropical and subtropical regions of the Pacific and Indian Oceans, thus putting them in the range of the Mariana Trench. The telescope octopus is also a gelatinous, transparent, fleshy fish, which makes it difficult to see without careful examination. That's by design, though, because what they'll do is live in a water column in a vertical position for most of their lives, and due to that, predators aren't actually able to see them very easily. They don't even cast a shadow. So you could say that this is a creature you might literally never see coming. Number 10. Anglerfish Without a doubt, one of the most famous and perhaps infamous fish that's known to live in the Mariana Trench, the anglerfish, also known as the sea devil, but that's a bit too terrifying of a name for me and my sweet little innocent pet guinea pig twinkle, so we're going to stick with anglerfish. The reason for the famousness is twofold. First off, it's a very scary looking fish. I mean, come on, you think they call it the sea devil because it's handsome out there in the depths? No, they call it that because it's a terrifying predator that you should be glad that humans don't see all that often. The other reason though is that it's famous because of its protrusion that comes out of its body and emits light. If you recall a certain entry from before, certain deep sea creatures do create their own light via bioluminescence that they can use to their advantage. For the anglerfish, they use the bulb at the end of their protrusion to get the attention of fish and then lure them in. Then, as they continue towards the light, that's when the anglerfish comes in from behind and chomp. Like I said, it's a very scary fish that I never ever want to see up close, but it does actually get more creepy because the anglerfish that you'll see in oceans, nine and a half times out of 10, are actually female. Where are all the males? Oh, they're barely a few inches long and they'll literally fuse to the females so that they can mate. Weird. Number nine, Mariana snailfish. One of the things that keeps people coming to the Mariana Trench is the mystery that surrounds it. Not the mystery of how it was formed, but rather the mystery of how creatures are able to survive within it. This goes especially for creatures that are invertebrates, because those creatures shouldn't be able to survive the pressures or the cold that's found in the trench, and yet they do. One such example is the Mariana snailfish. And just to give you an indication of exactly how deep into the trench it is, they're known to be found between 20,335 and 26,496 feet. That's really deep, and it means that these snailfish are able to withstand extreme pressures and cold. Compared to shallow water snailfish, these have several unusual adaptations for their dark and high pressure habitat, which includes transparent skin that lacks pigment, certain organs and eggs that are enlarged, and muscles that are more thin. 
The ossification of its bones, notably its skull, is incomplete, and it appears to have little or no ability to see. There are mechanisms that allow proteins within its body to still function, and differences in the cell membranes for maintaining their flexibility. If just goes to further prove how special they are, and the mystery of the trench that they're in, that we didn't find these until an exploration occurred in 2014. So, if the snailfish have been down there for quite a long time, and we've only just found them within the last 10 years, what else may be down there for us to discover? Number 8. Goblin Shark the goblin, and or vampire shark, is one of the most interesting things that you're going to find at the bottom of the Mariana Trench due to how it's been around for millions of years. The term for this kind of creature is living fossil, but while that does make it cool, it is terrifying to look at. If the anglerfish didn't give you nightmares, this thing certainly should. The elongated nose of the goblin shark is full of electromagnetic sensors. It can detect even the smallest discharge of electricity, such as in a prey's brain, making it a very capable predator. When it does find food, it'll not only lock in on it, it'll actually extend its mouth from its body and chomp down on the foe. Yes, just like a xenomorph, this thing is an underwater xenomorph and humanity is doomed. Number 7. Barrel Eye Fish the barrel eye fish is a great example of some creatures that go to great lengths to survive in the trench, even if that means toying with your biology in the most of unusual ways. As you can see, this is a fish with a literal transparent head. It's speculated that it allows the fish to catch light. Remember, because it's in the trench area, that's the midnight zone so it's capturing fractions of light to be used later. What a clever fish! As for its eyes, you'll be interested to know that the eyes are often pointed upwards, but why? Well, it wants to be able to see predators that might be lurking above. Those eyes, thanks to their sharpness and the head's transparency, can see through the dark better than any human night vision can, more than making it capable to survive in these depths. Number 6. Benthicodone Considering that there are all sorts of jellyfish throughout the waters of the world, it should not be that much of a surprise that a few of them exist within the Mariana Trench. One of which is benthicodone, a kind of jellyfish that also uses bioluminescence to lure in its prey. As you can tell from these pictures, it's honestly pretty cool to look at when it glows. And if you're curious about what those wisps are at the end, well, those are the very small tentacles, ones that it uses to move through the water. Now, I know you might be curious about the creature and want to hold it in your hands, but if you get close enough, just don't, okay? Because you'll be a whole lot safer that way. Number 5. Supergiant Amphipod the supergiant amphipod, also known as a species that I can't pronounce, is a very special crustacean, mainly because they have no shells. And they also have bodies that are scrunched up vertically. An unusual look, but it does work for them. The supergiant amphipod are known to reside only in the deepest of waters, and as the name would suggest, they are the biggest of their kind. They can be over a foot in length, which may not seem all that impressive, but compared to others within the species, that's pretty huge. In fact, it's so huge that some suspect that the conditions within the deep waters allow this species to be the spawn of gigantism. Number 4. Deep Sea Hatchet Fish there are over 40 species of the hatchetfish, and each of them have very shiny scales that often make them look metallic from the various angles that you'll see them. The twist here is that they're small, as they max out at about 6 inches, but their trick to surviving is what makes them all that special. Though they do live in the trench, they have also been known to be up higher in the waters of the world and thus they interact with the light at times. That's when their defense mechanism kicks in. Their skin will have the light bounce off of it and make it so that the predators see things that aren't actually there, and thus they end up staying away. Or they think that they know where the hatchet fish is and strike in the wrong spot. Either way, it ends up being a very clever trick in the end. Number 3. Frilled Shark 
Now, you thought the Mariana Trench only had one shark species? The Megalodon doesn't even count. And like the Goblin Shark, this is another living fossil. Also like the Goblin Shark, this shark is one that should be feared. It has 20 rows of teeth, and that's more than enough to rip its prey to shreds without a whole lot of thought. All that being said, no one's really sure how they attack their foes. Their bodies are like eels, proof of how old they are in a lot of ways, but their heads are more shark-like. So thus, there are many mysteries that surround what this fish does in the depths and how it survives at times. The frilled shark actually likes to reside at the bottom of the ocean, and so not unlike other creatures within those depths, all attempts to capture it have resulted in death upon reaching the surface. Though that might honestly be for the best. Number 2. Comb Jellies you might look at these transparent creatures and think, oh, those are more jellyfish. But in fact, they're not. Comb jellies may look like jellyfish, but they're not related to them at all. Consider it another mystery of life. What's more, there are at least 150 species of them out there, with more being possible, especially since some of them live in the trench. And as if that's not enough, their size can vary wildly, which includes the bigger ones being about 5 feet. And if that's still not enough, enough for you? Well, they have been around for a very long time. Some fossils even indicate that they were around over 225 million years ago. And if they're in the trench now, basically being undisturbed, then they might last for even longer than you may think. Number 1. The Mystery I've already touched upon this one before, but it's a bit poetic to go and touch upon again. Arguably, the strangest thing that's ever been found within the trench is life itself. There's a serious mystery that scientists have been unable to solve for a long time now, and that's simply, or not so simply, how life is able to actually survive down in the depths of the Mariana Trench. Well, life does find a way, but you have to think about the bigger picture. The reason that life finds a way is because it usually has time to find a way. Not unlike how human civilizations have evolved over centuries and millennia, depending on the inventions that have been made. But for these animals that I've shown you, both big and small, they had to adapt to some of the more harsh conditions on Earth. The toughest pressures, the coldest waters, and they're so well adapted to those things that if they were to try and leave the trench to come to the surface, their bodies would not survive the experience. So how is it all possible? Possible. I honestly don't know, and the more creatures that are found within the trench, the more the mystery continues. That's all from the realm of the Mariana Trench. What did you think of this deep dive into one of the deepest parts of our world? Are you amazed that so many unique creatures live there? And which ones did you find most unique out of the bunch? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments below. Check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.